Morning guys, welcome to another episode of Sports Thoughts with Team Robinson. This is a series where I give my two cents on the happenings in the sports world and usually make a fool of myself. Today I'm going to be talking about the fallout from the NFL draft. Um, I know this draft happened quite a while ago. I, uh, I wanted to leave it a little while to see how things settled down, to see how uh, um, I don't particularly enjoy the knee-jerk reaction videos or the knee-jerk reaction comments and come out judging a team's success on the draft um, lots of different things play into it so uh, today I'm going to run down the NFC North obviously that's where my team play it's the most important division in the whole league so first off we have the winners of the NFC, NFC North last year Green Bay Packers Green Bay have always been a team to build their, their franchise through the draft um, they draft players, they're all used on the roster, they're all found a place. Mike McCarthy is absolutely fantastic at utilising players at different skill positions, different subset packages, um, special teams. Um, Green Bay is, is essential to to compete. Um, therefore, uh, the, the draft class of this year, particularly with uh, going to the NFC Championship game um, and having a low pick, um, they didn't have a lot to work with. Particularly what they've done is they've had a lot of depth to their defence. They've picked up a free safety, generally regarded as one of the best cover free safeties in the draft. Um, plug in and play uh, Demarius Randall. Uh, they've picked up Quinton Rollins in, in low in the second, who was predicted to go high in the second, so he's a little bit of a steal. Um, they've also picked up a outside linebacker and a defensive lineman. So they're kind of focusing a little bit on the areas where th there are holes. Um, an interesting pick for me, they picked up Brett Hundley um, at pick 147. He's obviously a quarterback, he's a developmental quarterback. So I think they're looking to do with, with Brett Hundley what they did with Rodgers, sat behind Favre for many years, learn the game from one of the best, learn to understand the game, learn to read the defences and go through your progressions um, in the hope that that red shirt plus more years um, allows for... Yeah, the progression into a, a solid quality quarterback. Um, them doing this, particularly with such a late round pick or a, or a relatively late round pick, is that there is actually no risk to them. Um, if he comes off and he turns into a great player, they have ammunition with which to move on from Aaron Rodgers, who is one of the best players in the league and is consuming a lot of cap space and would be a devastating blow when he retired. Um, other than that, it's a very standard draft. Um, I would still question their run defence. Last year, they really, really did struggle at run defence. Clay Matthews moved inside, inside linebacker, um, in order to try and snuff out the run. And they did get better against the run. But traditionally, over the last three years, they have been awful on run defence. They needed an interior line, defensive lineman or an inside linebacker to shore up that, that run defence. Men in the box. At the minute, the only way they can stop this is men in the box. Um, Demarius Randall can come up into the box and deliver a hit if he needs to, but that's not traditionally what he is capable of. Um, they they have gone best player available while still filling their needs. So I, all in all, it's a pretty good draft for the Green Bay Packers. They are still going to be up there, um, and they're going to be hard to beat. Next up, we've got the Detroit Lions. Obviously, they have um, one of the what is considered one of the best second tier quarterbacks in uh, Matthew Stafford um, there's been questions about his action there's been questions about his uh, mechanics um, but he has really excelled in the last few years breaking all kinds of passing and, and touchdown numbers um, there's been some questions about um, his protection and therefore I understand perfectly their first pick of Lakin Thomas and um, he was projected as a second round pick so maybe it was a little bit of a reach but it's exactly what they needed um, I They've picked up one of the premium running backs in the draft, Amir Abdullah, uh, to replace Reggie Bush, who has left. Um, he's more of a running running back, so it gives them a bit, bit more dimension. Um, they were passing almost every single play last year, so creating a decent ground game uh, diversifies the game that they can, which they can call in terms of play action pass, draws, um, and just relieving some of the pressure off Matthew Stafford, who has one of a high interception number in the league because he's forcing things in. Um, the Lions um, moved around quite a lot, um, trading uh, actually with the uh, Minnesota Vikings at one stage. Um, 
they picked up a, a few people, uh, mostly depth, I would say. Um, one pick that really intrigued me was Michael Burton, fullback, pick 168, um, projected projected as a undrafted player. Um, he doesn't seem to have the skill set to fit the NFL, and a fullback position does not translate to the Lions' offense. They may have plans to move him around, uh, possibly into tight end or a halfback position, but he is an awful blocker. He can't block. Um, he doesn't fit their system currently, so unless they're planning on introducing a fullback package, I can't see him being a useful pick. In round five, it seems to me to be an absolute awful pick. I have no idea why they've done that. Um, they've made some... Uh, premium upgrades to the offensive line to protect Matthew Stafford. Um, as I said, Tomlinson seems like a reach, but they have uh, picked up Corey Robinson, who was protected as a late second-day pick, um, and so to pick him up in the sixth or seventh round. Um, his slide due to injury uh, seems very, fairly reasonable. Uh, pick up. Um, both... Alex Carter uh, and Abdullah Steeles um, from the projected draft grades. So all in all, um, the Lions have done a really good job of filling their holes whilst getting better players than they expected to be on the board at this time. Um, whether they missed on Burton, we'll have to see. But uh, I think overall a relatively good draft. I think they've closed the gap to Green Bay. Um, Obviously, they've lost a dynamic target in Reggie Bush, but we'll have to see how that plays out. Finally, we come to the Chicago Bears, who were incredibly disappointing last year. There were questions about their franchise quarterback. There were questions about their defense, which had previously been one of the best in the league. Um, they were hosting the draft. They seriously needed an overhaul of players. They needed a large number of selections in order to uh, diversify their to, to, order, to produce a little bit of depth within the team um, and they failed to do that. They managed to pick up six players. They picked up a, a blue chip player with the seventh pick overall in the draft, Kevin White. Whether they needed to or not, I, I don't know. Um, they already have Alshon and Jeffrey, so I, I would argue that they could pick up a second or third round wide receiver who would greatly complement Jeffrey. Um, bearing in mind that the they They already have a receiving core that could <coughs> that could outjump most Olympic jumpers um, and outrun most sprinters. Um, so they they went Kevin White in the first. Eddie Goldman, fantastic pick, really sure up their defensive line. Um, I question this pick in terms of importance. While the defensive line did need in, uh, improving, there were a lot of good cornerbacks and safeties on offer at that pick and bearing in mind they're playing in the pass heavy NFC North um, it would appear to me that cornerback or safety was more important than D-tackle but I think Eddie Goldman is a pick at that at that place and he, he really needs respect and um, they also picked Jeremy Langford a 106 who was projected to go high in the second so I think that's a, that's a great pick um, and then they filled out a little bit of depth on the offensive line um, it's a really good, relatively good draft. Come, uh, relatively good draft in terms of players available. They've picked up a lot of talent. I would just question the depth. Um, they're going to have to work very hard in the next few weeks of the free agency to fill out some holes in their roster um, and to really compete for places. Um, they've lost the competitive attitude and the ball hawk um, mentality that they had two years ago, um, and they just seem to have lost it a little bit. Um, I, I again, I would question whether they did enough on defense after a franchise uh, down year, um, lack of secondary and low low pick numbers. Um, I, th I feel like they shot themselves in the foot a bit. I think they could be last in the league again. And finally, but definitely not least, we get on to the Minnesota Vikings. 
they picked up Trey Waynes in the first round. I really liked this pick. There was talk of us getting to Fonte Parker to reunite him with his high school, uh, with his college quarterback. I really didn't like that pick. We didn't need another wide receiver. Um, Trey Waynes fills a hole. One of the best players available. Um, he is a fantastic cornerback. Um, whether there are questions over his run defense, but playing in the NFC North, I don't think that's an issue really. He has time to work on that. North Turner. Uh, sorry, not Norton. Mike Zimmer will be uh, onto him, um, improving his tackling, improving his hitting, improving his block shedding. It's immediately as soon as rookie camps have started. Um, I would have considered an outside edge rusher here. I don't think we have the capacity to rush the quarterback as much as we need to. Although with the development of our interior line, we have um, Everson Griffin coming off a, a career year potentially getting better and Sharif Floyd um, we have the ability to get to the quarterback from the interior pressure and with Xavier Rhodes, uh, Harrison Smith, Trey Waynes we have the ability to cover up and force quarterback to make decisions. Uh, I feel like our interception numbers could go up this year but I think we'll give away a lot of yards. Um, I think if we can turn over the ball it'll be a really successful move on the defence um, and our second round pick really complements that style uh, inside linebacker Eric Kendricks um, I think there was other options at this position uh, I would have liked to see us address the offensive line with a with a possible top tier player um, however considering Kendricks history he's played with our current inside linebacker Anthony Barr for two and a half years at college I believe um, he is an absolute freak of nature. Um, he fills an absolute massive hole, has huge potential, fits the system, um, and as I said, has great chemistry with our existing defence. Um, I think these factors could lead us to having uh, one of the best uh, linebacking cores that we've had in recent years. Um, so if we can have a fantastic linebacking core, huge edge rush and, and cover corners and secondary, then we could have a really good defence this year. Um, in the third, we picked up um, a pretty strange polarising pick, Daniel Hunter. Uh, this is a development pick. Um, kid is raw, explosive, um, but he doesn't know how to play the game. Uh, he's only played at the end for two years. Um, I can see how Mike Zimmer will be uh, walking him through OTAs. Um, many people said this was a really negative pick, especially considering the other needs that we needed. Um, uh, at the same time, he has so much potential. He has a ridiculously high ceiling. As long as he can get himself up to the verbiage, up to the playbook, up to the understanding of the uh, zone, zone blocking and things like that, um, and how to beat it, improve his block shedding, um, I think this could be a phenomenal developmental pick um, and I, I don't like to pick development uh, to judge developmental picks before they've actually had time to develop um, we have one of the best, best player development coaching staff in the league so I think given time uh, he could be a, a starter particularly on on serious passing situations um, so I think all in all it's a positive pick um, and one of the reasons why I'm happy to say that it's a positive pick is our pick the next pick that we made, which was TJ Clemmings. Um, obviously, we needed offensive linemen. Um, I was very upset when we didn't go after Mikey Patty in the draft, one of the best interior offensive linemen in the whole league, available for free agency, had expressed interest in playing at Minnesota. I think he would have been a perfect pick for us. Uh, we were struggling for cap room. Um, TJ Clemmings was a touted first round pick um, he has only played at offensive line for two years he used to play defence um, he played high school basketball college defensive end with I think double digit sacks in two seasons uh, sat out a year and then came to play offensive line um, and he has 
he dropped because of an injury and because of his inexperience. However, I think this could be one of the steals of the whole draft, picking up a potentially first-round talent uh, right tackle in the fourth round um, with a player development coach like we have. Um, this guy could be a fantastic player in two years' time, um, especially considering Matt Khalil uh, is struggling on the offensive line. I think it's really essential that we picked up a top-grade player Um We've improved every other position above this pick and then still managed to get a top-round talent. Um, he he was the draft top performer in vertical jump, broad jump and 20-yard shuttle, I believe. Um, shows he's explosive, that he's uh, incredibly um, athletic. Um, I think this will be a strong pick. Again, we have to see how the development goes and whether um, the Viking staff are successful in bringing him on the way that w we all expect him to be. But um, I think it's a really strong pick. Um, we picked up Michael Pruitt, tight end. Um, I think you can. We picked up Michael Pruitt in the tight end. Uh, I think he can contribute in dynamic sub packages, um, contribute on special teams right away. Um, st wide receiver Stefan Diggs has the speed and explosiveness to contribute instantaneously on return games, although we do have Cordero Patterson. We could potentially have two incredibly dynamic return players. He also has the speed and power to turn short underneath Western West Coast routes into huge gains. Um, he has that home run ability, that explosiveness to, to create massive gains and move the chains for us. Um, the rest of the picks added a lot of depth to the roster. We filled holes in special teams, backup positions, and long-term projects. Um, I think it was a really strong draft. We ticked all of the need boxes um, and got some fantastic players available. Um, the front office has done a brilliant job. We went into the draft with seven seven picks. Uh, they've traded out, still got brilliant players, uh, and ended up with ten players selected. Um, so it's filled the hole on the roster, got the best look at the players um, we needed. Um, the three extra players that we've picked up will probably flesh out the roster with a lot more talent than we, we previously had. Um, the, the team has definitely got better on both sides of the ball, particularly the defence, which will take some of the pressure off uh, Teddy Bridgewater in a game's management capacity. Um, and we have also got him more protection and uh, another weapon. Um, the tandem of, of Adrian Peterson and Teddy Bridgewater um, with Mike Wallace, Adrian Peterson, um Carl Rudolph, uh, it, it's looking really exciting. Every year, NFL.com releases analysis of the draft a few days afterwards. Um, they use an algorithm with which to predict when the players should have gone, injuries, risks, concerns, ability, um, statistical scores, um, and it gives an overall draft grade. Um, the Vikings actually cumulatively won that draft, according to NFL, which I'm really happy with. Uh, I think we did get a lot of uh, talent deep into the draft, far deeper than we normally do um, which means that overall I'm really happy with the team um, we've as I said we've upgraded on both sides of the ball um, increased ability in the problem areas uh, made the team younger and decreased salary cap um, one question mark is still the run game obviously we have we have had incredible success over previous years handing the ball off to Adrian Peterson and then playing play action routes off that uh, managed to keep Pond, Christian Ponder in a starting job for two and a half years, uh, relying on Adrian Peterson. Um, I mean, AP must have back difficulties from carrying Ponder for the last two and a half years. Um, considering Adrian Peterson didn't go in the draft, I don't think they're going to let him go now. Um, he has way too much talent. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I don't really like what's going on. Um, the team is trying to create a positive atmosphere around him returning, and Adrian Peterson is not going to be turning up organised team activities this week. He has stated that he will be in Dallas. 
he is holding out for a trade. He said he doesn't feel comfortable in playing in Minnesota. This I don't understand. Um, the league approached the Vikings and said you have to, you have to remove this gentleman from your roster. So the team did. Um, yes, we could have moved, stood up to them um, and said no, we wouldn't like to. Uh, however, it's not really the team's fault. Um, the league went through their investigations, found him guilty of child abuse, feel about that as you will, and they uh, placed him on the exempt list. Adrian Peterson is very upset about that and wants out. Um, I think in reality what he wants is he wants the Lombardi Trophy. He doesn't think he's going to get it in Minnesota, and I definitely don't think he's going to get it this year. He's 30, he's getting old, he needs a chance. Um, I still think there is some value to be had from trading him, um, particularly before he goes off the cliff, but I don't think it'll happen. I really like Teddy Bridgewater as the game manager, feeding the ball to Adrian Peterson, uh, and I really don't think him missing OTAs is an issue. He's done it before, he doesn't do any preseason practice, hits week one, 100 plus yards. Um, the guy's physical ability to perform without any uh, off season seasoning uh, is incredible. So I'm not worried about that. If he's on the pitch week one late night game against San Francisco in in, in Levi Stadium, he'll be ready to go. Um, so that sums up my draft analysis for the NFC North. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, stick around, leave a comment down below. Um, what I'd like to hear is uh, your guys' opinions on all of the, these draft picks that I've mentioned and your teams. Um, I hope you enjoyed the series, guys, and thanks very much for watching. Bye!